You know, every single day people are calling me saying, hey Tarek, how's the market? And they're talking about real estate. But I want to know, our food prices, what's up with these food prices? What is up with these food prices? It is getting so expensive to buy food. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but in the Northeast, there's a ton of quality grocery stores and they're small businesses. The owner works in the store. Nobody knows more about food prices than these guys. Come on in. Oh, hello. Welcome to Shaheen. Hey, hey. How, how you are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. Thank How's you everything? Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. I don't even know how to shop for food anymore. It seems like, I don't know, a good deal from a bad deal. And I'm supposed to be the guy that does. Can you help me? Well, honestly, these days, everything has gone up. Let me show you something. Before, about a year ago, a little over a year, all these packaged items were all like a kilo, like net weight. Now, what you see is like two pounds per package, which is 907. So they take out a, about 10% of the original package amount. And for the same price, you get 90%. So it's not so much region. that this product is going up in price, is that they're just giving us less of it for the same money. Yeah, so you're paying more, well, the same for less. What so do they call that, shrinkflation? Shrinkflation. 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 So yeah, you'll never see anything, a kilo package no more, or half a kilo package. It's always 454 grams or 908 and I've seen some items that have gone down to 800 grams for the same price you are paying for for the kilo. So somebody walks in the supermarket uh, these days, where are they usually going? What do they go to first? Why are they coming here? Well, they're just going for the beans because those are still like, now they'll like start boiling their own beans instead of getting the uh, pre-boiled stuff. So they'll save some money on this dry foods over here. You know, the greens mostly, you know, the meat, well, meat, we haven't really seen too much of a decrease, but people aren't buying as much or like stocking up as much. So kind of like buying just what they need for that day or instead of buying like maybe a couple kilos, they'll like go down to a kilo, kilo and a half, just enough for the family. And if you're in a rush, you just come pick up and go or we can cut it for you the way you like. You know what, like the economics of this is, you know, uh, supply and demand, right? Yeah. Uh, real estate wasn't any different. Yeah. That what happened in January to March was crazy. Uh, there wasn't I think a it lot was of supply. A fear of missing out, eh? Like there also. wasn't enough product. Well, what happened is everybody was taking note and saying, "Hey, you're telling me that if I put my home on the market right now, I can get X amount of dollars." Yeah. And greed set in, not in a bad yeah, way, but in but a normal economic way. Yeah, you sell for high, but you're also going to be buying for a high, also. Yeah. You know, so now there's a few people uh, who maybe they're going to be watching this. They remember me sitting in their living room saying, I refuse to sell your home unless you tell me where you're going. Yeah. Because you have this family. If I sell this home, you, yeah. know, you are going to have to pay a huge amount of money in order to rebuy. Also, the rental market is high, high now. So Extreme. you're going to be paying more than what your mortgage payment was. Sometimes it's hard because a renter who is paying $2,000, $2,500 yeah, for rent nuts. a month can't get approved for a mortgage, but he's been renting but for years. But he's renting, yeah. Right? And so he could have an $1,800 mortgage, but he can't get the loan, so he's forced to pay a premium on rent. Yeah. Those situations are very difficult to yeah, see. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. But so, I mean, uh, it, it, it's evening out. It's not as hot as it Yeah, was. but it's not gonna like drop as where it was. It just maybe it'll like go down a few percentage points or something, or what do you think? I think it's gonna be really hard for people. Because uh, the people bought high, so they're not gonna go sell their house at a loss, right? If they have to. Those people know. Plus, they also have a really low interest rate, so it's going to be hard for them to, uh, yeah, to be interested in exchanging it out. But at the same time, uh, uh, I think the the days of three hundred thousand uh, dollar homes, there. they're you know that's that's difficult to achieve now. So, so do you think that our houses in Calgary were cheaper than what they should have been? Like we have a really that? balanced market. Yeah. A super, super, a super stable market. You know, Vancouver and Toronto, high high highs and, and low lows. lows. But in Calgary, you could probably Steady. take a line and draw it over the past of 20 years, 4% growth. If you just went like through all of this, yeah. it's about 4% growth across the board. Okay. It's, it's very stable. Buying low, buying high, as long as you're holding it for a certain amount of time, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's your home. You don't lose with your own house, I think. So are you, are you looking to sell? No. Oh. You know, if I do, it's going to be you guys. <laughs> Don't <laughs> sell. <my> life. <laughs> Not yet.